हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स नमस्ते वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इंडस्ट्रियल फ्लूड पावर सो दिस चैनल कंटेंट वीडियो लेक्चर्स मेड बाय मी ऑन दिस हाइड्रोलिक्स एंड नेमेटिक्स सब्जेक्ट माय नेम इज सी के पुराणिक प्रोफेसर इन सेनगढ़ कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग पुणे आई एम ऑथर टू टेक नी योर पब्लिकेशन आई हैव रिटर्न सेवरल बुक्स ऑन दिस सब्जेक्ट टिल नाउ आई हैव कंप्लीटेड नियरली फिफ्टी वीडियोस एंड टू कंप्लीट दिस सब्जेक्ट फिफ्टी मोर वीडियोस आर रिक्वायर्ड टू डू द वीडियोस आई नीड मोटिवेशन प्लीज गिव सम लाइक्स कॉमेंट्स विथ गुड वर्ड्स एंड शेयर द वीडियोज अमंग युअर फ्रेंड सर्कल एंड सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल सो दैट यू विल गेट नोटिफिकेशन वेन आई एड any new video thank you we shall proceed to the today's topic okay friends we shall uh, understand speed control circuits different speed control circuits okay to control the speed of the actuator actuator means if it is a linear actuator it is cylinder and rotary actuators are motors to control the speed of cylinders or motors we use flow control valves flow control valves varying the rate of flow of fluid will vary the speed of the actuator means if i open the uh, flow control valve the speed of cylinder will be increased if i close it slightly the speed will reduce if the rate of flow of oil is more then cylinder will fill with higher speed that's why the piston will move with higher speed If the rate of flow of oil is less, then slowly oil will fill in the cylinder. So that's why piston will also move slowly. To increase or decrease is to control the speed of the cylinder or motor. We use flow control valves, and there are three different types of speed control circuits depending on the position where we keep the. flow control valve first one is meter in circuit in meter in circuits rate of flow of oil is controlled at inlet of the actuator that is oil which is going into the actuator into the cylinder is metered or controlled in meter out circuits the rate of flow of oil is controlled at outlet of the actuator that is oil which is flowing out from the actuator is controlled in case of bleed off circuits rate of flow of oil is controlled in a bypass line which is going towards the reservoir tank that is oil which is bleeded off to reservoir tank is controlled all the three different speed control methods are explained here so first one this is meter in circuit and this is meter out circuit second one and third one is bleed off circuit the first one is meter in for extension and uncontrolled during retraction the second circuit is meter out for extension and uncontrolled during retraction third circuit is bleed off for extension and uncontrolled during retraction in all these three circuits during retraction the speed is not controlled speed is controlled during extension only for extension this port a is inlet from here we should supply the oil and port b of the cylinder that is outlet that is head end port is inlet rod end port is outlet when we supply oil to inlet cylinder will extend and oil which is there on the other side of the piston will come out like this so this is outlet in the meter in circuit the flow control valve is placed here such that oil which is going into the cylinder will flow through this flow control valve and during retraction oil which is coming out here that will flow through the check valve that is reverse free flow is there forward controlled flow reverse free flow in meter out circuit again oil which is coming out of the cylinder during extension will flow through this flow control valve and during retraction oil will flow through the check valve a reverse flow is free flow and in bleed off circuit controlled amount of oil flow is taken back to tank through this bypass line we can control the rate of flow through this bypass line by using this flow control valve so that only the remaining 
amount of flow will flow to this cylinder. In the first circuit, that is meter in circuit, when the lever of the ball is kept in first position, P to A, B to T connection is made. Oil flows from pump to head end port of the cylinder to the inlet of the cylinder through flow control valve. The flow is regulated. The oil which is flowing into the cylinder is controlled. That's why it is meter in control for extension. When we keep the lever in the other position, P to B, A to T connection is made like this. Oil flows from P to B, it flows to rod end port, cylinder will retract and oil on the other side of the piston will flow through this check valve back to tank. So this flow is free flow, that's why retraction speed is not controlled. In the second circuit, that is meter out circuit, during extension, when the lever is kept in first position, P to A, P to T connection is made. Oil flows from P to A and it flows to A port of the cylinder and from B port oil comes out and that oil flows through the flow control valve and oil which is coming out of the cylinder is controlled. So that's why this is meter out circuit for extension. When the lever is kept in the second position, P to B, A to T connection is made and hence oil flows to B port of the cylinder through the check valve. So this is free flow and that's why retraction speed is not controlled. In the third circuit, this is bleed off circuit. Here in first position of the valve, P to A, B to T connection is there. Oil coming from the pump flows from P to A and then it is flowing like this and controlled amount of oil flow is bypassed back to tank through this flow control valve. Only the remaining oil will flow into the cylinder. So that's why extension speed is controlled. When we keep the lever in the second position, P to B, A to T connection is made. Oil flows from P to B and then to B port of the cylinder. Piston will retract and oil on the other side of the piston will flow back to tank from A to T and it is flowing back to tank. Retraction speed is not controlled because the flow is free flow. There is no flow control valve in that line. To understand the application of meter in meter out bleed off circuit, that is which circuit uh, where to apply. Okay. To know that, uh, we should understand the basic uh, uh, types of loads, uh, that is uh, opposing load and overrunning load. Opposing load is called positive load, overrunning load is called negative load or running away load. Opposing load is that load which is acting in opposite direction to the motion of the cylinder, cylinder or motor actuator. Overrunning load is that load which is acting in the same direction of motion of cylinder or motor. Examples of opposing load, we shall say. Uh, we are lifting this weight, let us say. The cylinder is used to lift the weight. Okay. The motion of the cylinder or motion of the piston, piston rod or motion of this weight is in upward direction, we are lifting it. But the load is acting in downward direction. Load, it is weight, always it acts in downward direction. So since the load is in opposite direction to the motion of the cylinder, we call it as opposing load. Uh, second is cutting force. Cutting force during metal cutting. Say this uh, cylinder is used to uh, cut the workpiece, let us say. The tool is cutting the workpiece. Okay. The tool movement is in forward direction, but the cutting force will act in opposite direction to that motion. So that's why cutting force is an opposing load. In the same way, packing friction within the cylinder. You see, the piston is there and the cylinder, uh, uh, the piston is uh, fitted inside the cylinder with the help of uh, seals, rubber seals, tightly fitted. So it requires some force to move that piston. So that force is called packing friction. Packing friction is also an opposing load. And friction between load and contact surface. If uh, some load is to be moved, okay, instead of this tool, there is load, let us say. If we, have, if we want to move the load over a surface, then there will be friction between that load and the surface. So that load can be moved when we apply some force. That force is the frictional force 
it always acts in opposite direction to the motion of the load. So these are opposing loads. Coming to running away loads, all the weights, weight which is acting in downward direction, okay, during lowering weight which is lowering, okay, so that is overrunning load, okay. Weight is uh, due to gravity, it is acting in downward direction and we are going to lower this uh, load, okay. We want to move this load in downward direction. If both are in the same direction, so this is overrunning load. Weight of the punch assembly during punching operation. Punch is moving in downward direction, but okay, the weight of punch assembly is also due to gravity, it is in downward direction. Okay, weight of drill assembly during drilling the, uh, operation. Okay, so those are all overrunning loads. Comparison between meter in, meter out and breed of circuits. Meter in circuits can be used for opposing loads only. And similarly, breed of circuit also, it can be used for opposing loads only. Meter in circuit and breed of circuits can't be used for overrunning loads. Whereas, meter out circuit can be used for both opposing loads as well as overrunning loads. And this is because in case of meter in circuit, if load is also in the same direction of motion of the piston, okay, if load is in the same direction, then the load will pull this piston and the return line is not having any wall to hold that load, due to which there will be jerky motion in case of meter in and in case of bleed off also. This return lines is not containing any wall. So that's why meter in circuit and bleed off circuit can't be used for overrunning loads. They can be used for opposing loads only. Whereas meter out circuit can be used for overrunning load also because the written line, this line, it is containing a flow control wall. So this will hold the overrunning load. Uh, major limitation of uh, meter out circuit is pressure intensification. Pressure intensification occurs in case of meter out circuit for extension if the valve, flow control valve is closed. And this is meter out circuit for extension of the cylinder. Now let us see what happens if I close this valve. If I close this valve, then piston can't move further, it will stop there. The piston will stop that's why oil from pump can also, it can't flow into the cylinder. And the pressure will increase beyond the pressure setting of this pressure relief valve. The pressure relief valve will open and oil will start coming out through the pressure relief valve. That means in this line the pressure is maximum. If it is, if I set this for 500 bar, in this line the pressure is 500 bar. The pressure is 500 bar here but the pressure on the rod side as the area is less, only annular area is available. Here full area of the piston is there, but here on the other side only annular area is available. So therefore there will be intensification of pressure. In this direction the force is pressure, pressure P1 let us say that is 500 bar into area of the piston. But in this direction the force is pressure P2 into the annular area. This is less, isn't it? Since the area is less, pressure P2 will be more than pressure P1. So pressure on the rod end side, rod end side will be increased. We should consider this intensification in pressure before setting this pressure relief valve. We should set the pressure relief valve for this intensified pressure. Otherwise, the pipe may burst or some components may fail and oil may start leaking out. Uh, one more important point uh, I want to tell is, bleed of circuit will save energy. It will avoid overheating of oil. Look here, in case of meter in circuit, oil has to flow through the flow control valve. In meter out circuit also, oil has to flow through the flow control valve. Okay, the flow is controlled. If pump is pumping 10 units of oil, then uh, the flow is controlled and less amount of flow, maybe 5 or 6 or whatever we set 
so less amount of oil will flow in the in the circuit okay and remaining oil remaining oil has to flow through this pressure relief valve back to tank okay but this pressure relief valve is set for maximum amount of pressure this pressure relief valve will open only when that pressure is reached means oil will be flowing back to tank at high pressure during extension of the piston so this flow of oil at high pressure consumes some amount of power power is the product of pressure and discharge if pressure is more then power is also more so that power consumption can be avoided or reduced by using bleed off circuit here in this line okay in this line there is no any flow control valve okay and the bypass line is there there is flow control valve but it is connected to connected to reservoir tank and that's why the pressure will not increase and uh, uh, there is no such case of uh, uh, opening of this pressure relief valve and going back to the server tank like this.